Welcome to 4.6 Math Moment. Today's students um, continue to learn about multiplication strategies, but today they had one of their numbers as a decimal. So we worked through some strategies on how to multiply with a decimal number. So the first example says 19 and 3 tenths times 35. Now, what we really tried to show students is that when you multiply with decimals, you multiply exactly the same as you would multiply any other whole number. All right, we just have to put the decimal back into our answer um, to make sure that it's correct. So what I have students do is just pretend like this is actually the number 193 times 35. So really just taking that decimal out of their problem until the very end. All right, so we're going to multiply just like we did in past lessons where I distribute the 5 to each of the numbers on top before moving on to the 3. 5 times 3 is 15, so I carry my 1. 5 times 9 is 45, plus 1 is 46. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9. Now, because I'm done distributing my 5 to all three numbers up top, I'm going to X it out so I don't get confused. I just get rid of it completely. And I also want to get rid of anything that went through with it, so the 1 and the 4 as well. Anytime I make an X up above, I make an O down below to hold that place. And now I get to distribute the 3 to each of the numbers up top. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 9 is 27. So I place my 2 up top. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5. Now, I have the numbers that I need to add. I need to make sure that they are correctly lined up. All right, that's another important step that we need to make sure we're doing with multiplication. Once they're lined up, I just get to add. 9 plus 6 is 15, carry the 1. 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 7 is 17, and 5 plus 1 is 6. Now, now that I have my whole answer and I'm done complete with, completely with the multiplication, I need to go back to my original problem and think, how many numbers were behind my decimal in the problem? Well, there's only one number behind the decimal in the problem, so I want that to match my answer. Okay, I want one number to be behind my decimal in my answer. And that's how we figure out how to multiply with decimal. You multiply exactly the same way as you would multiply with whole numbers, and then you decide how many numbers are behind that decimal, and make sure that it matches the problem and the answer. So let's look at another example. This one says Kelsey spent $4.52 on snacks at the movie each week for six weeks. So how much did Kelsey spend after those six weeks? Well, I know that this word each is a big multiplication keyword. Each means one. So every one week she spent this much, but I want to know how much after six weeks I'll need to multiply to do that. So I'm going to set up my problem just like it would look. Okay, $4.52 times six. But what I could do if the decimal point confuses your student is you could have them pretend like it's not there until the very end. Right? So I'm just going to multiply everything by 6. 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 5 is 30 plus 1 is 31. 6 times 4 is 24 plus 3 is 27. Now, I have the answer and it looks like 2,712. But I know that because I'm working with a decimal, I need to put a decimal in my answer as well. I look back at my problem and see how many numbers are behind the decimal in my problem. That same amount of numbers needs to be behind my um, decimal in my answer. So I've got two numbers behind the decimal in my answer, so I want two numbers to be behind my decimal in my um, answer. So I had it here in my problem and I want it in my answer for a final answer of $27.12. If you have any other questions about 4.6 and multiplying with decimals, make sure to see your math teacher.